I don't know why this has to be a silent movie. <laughs> it's WD-40. Probably because I'm nervous. You really kind of don't want to break this bit off down inside there. Just as a suggestion. Starts getting pretty snug when you get that far down in. Don't get greedy. Pretty sure the 7075. Kind of impressed with it. It's nice material. I did buy a rudder from those other guys. Nothing against them. But where they uh, they put the uh, holes right in the lead, right in the center of the blade, and so it actually results in you know a pretty large cutout in the in the blade right in the front. But as a result, they couldn't use a, a large hole because then you would have this huge cutout. It would be just ridiculous. So they use really, really small holes and way too small to get enough cooling. We're close. This is the time when you think, ah, and you just try to push it through. <laughs> and it goes snap. <laughs> and you just wish you could take back the last three seconds of your life. But you can't. You were snug there. There we go. Oh, it went through. Yeah, buddy. Okay, now for the next little order of business. Remember I told you we're going to change how the rudder mounts in the bracket by cutting off uh, this area here. Somewhere around there. Okay. And that's going to raise the rudder a little bit, which is good because it's way more than I need. We're still going to wind up hacking some off of the bottom of here. But that'll raise it up and that'll eliminate this flat spot. Who wants to pound that through the water, right? So we're going to do that right now. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, I ain't got a milling machine. I don't know how to do that stuff. Well, you know how I learned how to do it? I went out and I bought a cheap machine and I started turning the screws and pulling the levers and breaking bits until I figured out how to cut stuff man you can do it uh, you need a little room you know park the wife's car out in the street it'll be fine uh, put one of these in your garage you're good to go all right so I'm going to set up here and I'll see if I can show you a cut here in just a moment all right hang tight little bits at a time on my cheap machine good machine could knock this thing out two passes hey I'm not doing production parts baby I'm just getting her done I'm sure you're really enjoying this part how about I show you the finished product here in a minute okay yeah all right hang loose okay we're ready to keep going with our rudder here we have our holes drilled nicely here, down through here. But what we have is a rudder that's too long still. We remember, we've milled this section off now. And we've eliminated that brutal front hit. By the way, this is the one I was telling you about. The leading edge, they've drilled straight into the leading edge. The idea was to provide better water. There's some debate as to whether or not these holes should be on the right or the left. I have theory about that, about most things. It's probably wrong. Uh, uh, I'll get into that another time. Ask me if you want to know. Uh, anyway, they drilled them straight in the front. They had to use a really small hole to keep this cut out small. I went ahead and milled this one out to that uh, 1 8 just because I wanted to see what it was going to do. And uh, that's pretty ridiculous. Can you imagine what that might do to the boat when you're trying to drive it? So anyway. This one's out. I just had it here for uh, talk about this again. But have the bracket removed. By the way, super cool uh, M5 performance bracket. <laughs> I want to say this. I'm trying to remember. I think this is a Speedmaster 20 uh, bearing block uh, for uh, the little Spork 20s. Uh, this piece is a piece of 7075 70, angle that I, I milled myself. And uh, of course, you got to cut this here to taper so you can have these super cool little shallow screws. The actual rudder block itself is from the uh, Speedmaster 
uh, uh, 60 series size, you got to cut it down just a little bit to make it fit in the 20 block. Uh, you probably can't tell. That's just a quick job on the mill. Or yeah, I mean, you can use a Dremel tool to make all this stuff. You really can. Okay, but I do that for lightweight because I'm, I'm just kind of weird. Oh, in fact, let me show you something. You ready? Okay, see these guys here, right? Yeah, you put your screws in. Here we go. Shallow lock nuts, a little bit smaller than the full size ones. Save a little weight. Now, here's a groovy thing. Sorry, we're going to spin. Magnet. Right? Oh, yeah, baby. Aluminum screws. I know you're laughing at me. You're saying that's ridiculous, but I, I have a, let me tell you my theory, okay? My, uh, the whole reason for this here is because I, I need one mile an hour. If you think about it, and your boat and my boat are, are equal speed, but if I can get one mile an hour on you, I'm moving past you on the back stretch at about that pace right there. That's all I need. I need just, I need one mile an hour. So I try to carve a little bit of weight everywhere I can. Um, and you think it's silly, but check this out. Um, I had, yeah, here we go. Okay, little scale, right? Little West system things. I use this to mix small batches of epoxy, super handy. You probably can't see it. I have it on the ounce scale. Here's what you're gonna use. I know this is what you're using. You've got these uh, stainless screws and everything. And man, I'm doing a cool thing. I'm using stainless. Yeah, that's great. Uh, big lock nut. That might even be a shallow one. Is that a shallow for steel? I don't know. But this is the one you'd use. 0.13 ounce. Okay, that ain't very much, right? You're like, what the heck, you know, but 10 of these and you got yourself an ounce. Well, you're well over an ounce. You got almost an ounce and a half with 10 of these. Here's my aluminum setup. Aluminum lock nut, aluminum screws. I got these cool black ones now. I'm going to swap these out. Okay. 0.4, wait, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, oh, 0 0.03, 1.3, I'm saving a tenth of an ounce doing this, tenth of an ounce, what the heck, now I'm doing it twice, I got two tenths now, guess what I use here for mounting this onto the transom, yeah, aluminum screws, come on, only two hold it here, why wouldn't four hold it here, they do, they hold it just fine. So I got aluminum screws here, I got aluminum screws here, I got a smaller bracket. Here's a, uh, this one's actually Accutech, um, identical to Speedmaster. They've, they've copied Speedmaster, let's face it, but they put this groove in here so they can say they didn't. Uh, you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> I may cut that out, but okay, so here's the same thing. It's the same depth. Okay. Same depth as, as my arrangement here. No screws in this one even, by the way. So it's got an advantage, because I've got the screws in this one. Just under two and a half ounces. This one, with my little mounting screw in this here. Under one and a half ounces. I just saved another full ounce right here. Man, what if I can do this 10 times and I save an ounce and a half and I save another ounce here? Maybe a little bit more once you get the rest of the screws on there. I'm getting ahead of you, man. I'm getting ahead of you. I'm coming up on that one mile an hour. Be thinking. Always be thinking. Back to our rudder and what we're doing. So our original is mounted in this bracket. This bracket has an extra set of mounting holes so I can raise and lower it just slightly. Uh, just a little under a quarter inch, I think. But you never know what's going what's gonna to work as you're looking for that one mile an hour. This was our original, right? We'd cut the leading edge off of this one, which is, well, yeah, the upper portion of that leading edge. Super cool. Go into the dual pickup, as we've already talked about. It's still full length. We still got to cut it to size. Remember, we're going to redrill this small hole to this size so that it becomes our upper mounting. Okay, see how nice that is now? We've eliminated that blunt leading edge. We're going to hack it off of there. You think we're ready to go, right? Nope. New problem. Let me show you. Thank goodness for GoPros. You know, I used to always try to shoot these while I'm holding my phone with one hand. I do not have a fancy camera because of the uh, five or six pennies I make per video on those ads. It's going to take me a while. Look at this. 
See the problem? I'm changing the position of the rudder. Uh. Now granted, of course, this is moving up. I'm using those original holes, but I can't move the holes back because then it'll interfere with the, uh, with the pickup holes. So I can't move these holes over as I redrill. This is where it's gonna mount on that bearing block. All right, no problem, right? I'm gonna cut this bracket and I'm gonna move this forward and that'll get me back to the original spot. And by the way, you might be looking at that saying, geez, man, it's a quarter inch, what? Three eighths of an inch, no big deal. No, it's a big deal, man. Every, uh, every 16th of an inch is a big deal. You think looking at a toy boat going 65 miles an hour, you make a small change, you have changed the boat. And th the reason I really know this is a big deal on this boat is that I have already shortened this bracket and improved the ride of the boat. It was a real wide bugger, a wild bugger when this was further back. And let me see if I can show you the hows and whys of that. This might be something you'll find useful. Oh, look at these awesome little aluminum screws. I hope I got the GoPro pointing in the right direction. I never, never know. I got a video I was doing on making molds that uh, I shot like an hour's worth of video and then realized that it was totally useless. Okay, here's the thing. This is where it mounts. And here's the challenge on this boat. Can you, I don't know if you can see this. When I turn left, it strikes this rear shoe portion here. If I move this guy further forward, I'm gonna limit this left turn ability. Now I know you're saying, well, who cares, right? We're going right. Not all the time, dude. You ever seen a wicked crash right in front of you and you got a hard left and you shut the throttle and you crank that baby hard left and you maneuver around the problem and you punch it. If you can't do it, you're either gonna run into the wreck or you're gonna be shutting your boat down and you're out of the race. Can't take that chance. I need this hard left capability. I say I need it. Um, I want this hard left capability. So, uh, a couple things. Next thing you're thinking is, all right, well then you're just gonna move the whole bracket over a little bit, right? If I move the whole bracket over this way slightly, it's not that big a deal. And now I can, whoo, I can really go left, move it forward and I'm good, right? No, I'm getting too close to the prop. There, you gotta imagine there, there's, a certain, there's a certain thrust cone of water coming off this prop. You know it because you see the rooster tail come up. That's happening all the way around. I know you think, oh, it's just the rooster tail. No, it's everywhere. And, and that's the cone. And, and if I get the rudder in that cone, first of all, it's gonna reduce the effectiveness of the rudder because it's just in this weird, wicked prop blast. Uh, second of all, it's going to interfere with the thrust and I don't wanna do that. I have a, uh, I, was gonna, I was just gonna say it's a rule it's not a rule, it's a desire. I want to be two and three quarter inches away. Two and three quarter to three on a nitro. Uh, this one is already too close. I'm about two and a half. Uh, well, if I had that linkage on there, you'd see it. It's about, really about two and five eighths. Uh, and that hurt me badly when I was building the boat. That's part of the reason I had this thing back further because I felt I could move it over. None of that worked out. So I can't go to the right, man. I can't do it, not gonna do it. Next plan, and believe me, this has crossed my mind and it still may happen. I could grab the Dremel tool and knock just a tiny bit right off of this corner here. Pow, so that when it moves forward, I can still get a little bit of left. And I may do that. Uh, don't tell the scale Nazis about that. So there's another plan. I know some of you are thinking this. You're probably yelling at the screen right now. You're saying, well, move the prop back. That's way easier than moving the rudder forward, right? You just you put an extended strut on there, whatever. No, can't do it, man. RC Unlimited's, we try to build these boats scale. This thing should look scale. Dimensionally, it's scale. Prop location is scale. If I had pictures where I could demonstrate that the strut you know, was ever extended on the boat, fine, I can do it. But as it is, nope, that guy's going right where it is. And, and then maybe you're thinking, and this is what I've thought, is that maybe with the rudder further back, it's better. Remember, I already told you I moved it forward, so I'm kind of... Uh, I'm, I'm reversing my story a little bit, but let me tell you why. I believe, and again, this is all nothing but theory that works in my head and has worked in practice, that if you position the rudder, okay, behind the propeller, I now have these forces happening. Remember, the propeller is always trying to turn the boat because it's spinning and it's, so it's trying to walk the rear of the boat over. And what the propeller is largely doing is preventing the boat from turning. 
until you turn the wheel and now it allows that rear end to come around that it wants to do anyway. But if I have these forces opposed to each other, away from each other, what's that doing to my boat? It makes it angry. If they're working together, my boat's not ticked. All right, so there's a magic spot. I don't know where it is, but there is a magic spot where the thrust behavior from the prop and the holding force of the rudder work perfectly together. Too far forward with the rudder and we've made it angry. Too far rearward and we've made it angry. So you're just trying to find that secret spot. Um, I tend to want to wind up with the uh, tip of the uh, prop somewhere is near the middle of the rudder. And this one is already a little bit too far back. So if I go that extra quarter, three eighths of an inch, uh -uh, gonna wreck the boat. So we're gonna do something. We're gonna cut this, we're gonna move this forward. I'm gonna see how much left I wind up with. If I gotta take an eighth of an inch off of here, I'm gonna do it. All right, so next thing it's gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut this top. We're gonna drill our, uh, we'll drill our hole first. And we'll get this position where we want it. And by the way, oh, here's another one. Gosh, I have so much to tell you. You've seen this on your boats and you've just kind of ignored it. I'm not, look, I'm not judging, right? It's just, this is the way these things come and it's the way they tend to be. And we all just kind of do what we're doing and move on, right? There's so much work to do. I haven't got time to fart around with all this stuff but sometimes you just have to. And when you have the opportunity, because it's convenient for another thing that you're doing anyway, well then do it. Okay, I've mounted it, right? Are you ready for this? Everything matters. Remember, eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, it's all important. Are you kidding me? Why do they do that? The uh, holes here are bigger than they should be, and it allows for a ton of slop. So when I re-drill it, I'm gonna drill it snug. This is going to slip through really tight. This guy's going to slip through really tight. And even in the bracket here, these are slightly oversized, so I'm still going to have some movement, but I'm not going to have that ridiculous, you know, three quarters of an inch swing at the bottom of it. So we're going to eliminate that. All right, here we go. We're going to drill and we're going to cut. Then we're going to cut new threads here and we'll make our new water fittings. Okay, all right, let's rock. Let's see what we got here. About 160. If you don't have a set of numbered bits, get them. 159, 161. That's my guy. Always hold things in a clamp. Never hold it with your hand. And the good idea if you want to slice yourself really badly is to hold it this way so that the sharp edge comes around and whacks you in the wrist. Ha ha ha. I'm an idiot, but I'm not that much of an idiot. But trust me, this was properly clamped. Here's the thing. This is just part of being me. I hate square cut holes. professional looking yeah that's gonna matter 50 years from now when I'm gone somebody will see this thing and go man that guy was awesome oh you know what that's a good fit okay all right next hole is going right there the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a drill that kind of sort of fits. And I want it right there. See it? I can. You probably can't. Oh, 
If you've watched some other videos, you know that I've told you that my greatest skill is in covering my mistakes <laughs> and making things look like I did them on purpose. Look at that. See beautiful holes? Beautiful fit. Cute little taper. Woo! Okay. I could poke it to the next size. Make it an easier fit. But that goes through without too much fuss and it makes it nice and snug, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and it's almost straight up and down. I may go ahead and go one more size over and that'll give it just a tiny bit of slop. In fact, let's do that. I think I'm digging it. We'll see once we get it all mounted up. Okay, next little item of business. It's right there. I could leave it, right? <laughs> Wrong. You know why we can't do that. That's weight. That is weight. Let's make it go away. We already know it fits fine. I just want to look at it and say, ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. <laughs> All right, we got to cut some threads. Number 21, I'm told, after a quick Google search. Let's see if that feels about right. It does. Come on. <laughs> Edit. All right. Oh, look at that. No, oh, that's fantastic. Okay, carry on. It looks pretty straight. Not really. Okay, we're gonna turn a little, and then we back up and knock the chip off. Turn a little, back up, knock the chip off. I'm not gonna chip off the old prop. <laughs> the old rudder, as it were. Okay. Okay, we're gonna roll that out. Carefully, so as not to dink up that last thread. Good start there. Gonna do the same in the forward hole. Looks good. You'll feel it bite, and then when you back up, you'll feel it knock that chip off, and that's what you want to be doing. There's no place for the chips to go inside a hole, right? So you can't just run a big old long chip off it like you might do with them. Um, Lathe. I don't think I cleaned that as far down. Whoop. We'll see how well that goes in. Oh, that feels really good. Even if we haven't cut our threats, threads very well down deep, threats. <laughs> My only threat is to whoop you on the pond. If we haven't cut them very deep, that's okay because this will actually bind a little down in there and I think that would please me. We'll 
like that. Oh, that's beautiful. And we're gonna glue that booger in there, whether we use red Loctite or a little JB weld, I haven't really decided yet. But, you know, we have no, especially after we cut this off, you know, we've got nothing to grip as we thread it in. And uh, that's, uh, that's not a good recipe for tightening. So, you know, a, a theory here, maybe we'll go a little bit long, grab it with some pliers, run it down in, then cut it off. That might be the better route to go. But I dare say that rudder is ready. That was a lot of work. What's next? Bracket. Got to modify it. Move that rudder forward. Don't worry, I got boxes full of these aluminum screws. I replace them a lot, but you really can't use them in an application where you're taking them in and out frequently, especially on these little guys, because that little Allen slot doesn't hold up well on these. But... See, there's our upper and lower holes for adjustability. We're just gonna replicate these holes in slightly further. I think we'll probably do our cut first. And I think where I want to be is kind of right in line with those holes. I mean, the coolest way would be to make the holes disappear altogether, you know, the originals, and cut all the way back to here. But I think that's going to move it further than I want to. So I'm going to target kind of buzzing right down the middle of those. And you're not going to see them when the bracket's on, so you won't know that I have rebuilt this item several times. Looks like a really good way to get hurt. Let's find out. Went a little beyond the midpoint. I think that's good. think this way this way right here oh remember we're gonna invert this because we want to put those on the inside let's do that now so we don't lose track these pins by the way here's a thing see that solid pin kind of silly extra weight doesn't need to be that way if I had a piece of this hypodermic tubing that exact size that'd be kind of cool I'm gonna measure this when we get it out. I'm gonna order it. Zero. 187. I'm going to trust that. And I'm going to order it for future reference. My rudder pins will be hollow. Is there a top and bottom? No. You thinking what I'm thinking? A little Loctite? It had some on there. How do I know that? Because well, I did it. I don't want it locked on there forever. We're going to use a little bit of blue. I like this little blue paste stuff. Real quick, easy. Even if you used red, you'd be all right, but you'd probably have to grab a little mini torch, heat it up to break it loose. Not the end of the world. Make sure we hit our flat spot. Oh yeah, we did. It wouldn't go in that far if we hadn't. Okay, I feel it hitting. I'm really making sure. I realized I was out of the screen there for a second. I apologize. I gotta really focus on staying right in the middle of the glasses. 
Okay, it's on there tight. Let's check. Did I put it on upside down? No, that's the way I wanted to go because I want my little tapers to be on the side now. There's a reason for that. I forgot to show you. Let's talk. Of course, dual pickup, that's what this is all about. So here's my former water line hole. Right? Kind of cool. It was up on the rudder. I didn't want it back here. You know, you don't want to be running that way. You don't want to run it over to this side, by the way. Just don't do that. If you've ever done it, you know why. Because the prop blast will actually hit the hose and it'll try to pull it out. And you'll draw that hose tight. Uh, and if things aren't cool up there, you'll wind up kinking it or even pulling it off. And you'll have all this hose dangling out here and wonder why your motor smoked until you realize what happened. So anyway, you want to go to this side. And there ain't much space here, but I'm going to put another hole just below this one. And I want the two hoses to kind of look all cool and sexy coming out together and hooking on here. And uh, the lock nuts that were on this side before, were getting in the way of me being able to run two hoses through there. So that's why we're putting the tapers on this side now. So it's out of the way. Okay. When you look at my stuff, you'll always kind of look at it and go, now what in the heck was he thinking? And But there's usually a reason. Always put more tools in your drawer than it can hold. Makes it so much more fun when you need to try to get a tool and it's all bound up. What size is it? Not that one. Mm-hmm. I just picked these up on Amazon. Way cheaper than those horsehair brushes. And way better. The hairs don't pull out unless, of course, you get it caught as you're milling and you're trying to lube at the same time. Don't ask me how I know. I back up every now and then just to force the chip to break because it's just, I know it looks cool when you get a big old long stringy chip coming off of there, but it'll actually bind up your bit or it'll just swing around and hit you. Not a big deal with aluminum, you're not gonna care, but do that with a piece of steel once. First set. Look at that, that's beautiful. I hate to pull that back out of there because it was such a tight fit, but we're gonna make another set of holes. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's got a little WD on there, it's tasty. <laughs> okay. Buddy, that's a lousy place to sit. Does your dog do that? And Jackson, when he, when he wants something, he'll just put himself right underneath my feet. Forced me to notice him. Plus, I told I think I told you, I don't know, remember if it was this video or another video, but he can just barely hear anything now. And so he knows that if he falls asleep and I walk away, then he'll miss out on something awesome. And uh, so he figures he gets close enough where I'm likely to kick him if I try to walk away. He believes that's worth the sacrifice because then he'll know that I'm going somewhere and hopefully toward his food dish, as that seems to be his big motivator in life now that he's older. He used to be hiking. I used to have to, I never, I never could build toy boats because I was always had to take my dang dog somewhere. Not my, I'm sorry, I apologize. Apologize for that right there. I love my dog. Both of them, I don't think you've met Maggie. 
She's not really a shop dog. Jackson just wants to hang in the shop all the time. Used to anyway. Like I said, now he hangs out a little bit closer to his food dish most of the time. But Maggie's my little sweetheart. She just don't like hanging in the shop. She's a lot like my wife. Just the best ever. But won't hang out around machines and toys. It works for us. Sweet. Okay, so a really funny thing just happened. I mean, it wasn't funny like, haha, it was more funny like, are you freaking kidding me? Anyway, I shot a whole bunch of video on how I finished this up. And I mean, this was Oscar caliber stuff and somehow I lost it all. So we're gonna talk through this just really quick. The last steps we were doing here was putting our fittings in. And as you'll recall, let's see. What we're shooting for is a whole lot more cooling. That's why we're using this tubing is a short piece of it here that I'm redoing now, which displeases me because I hate to repeat myself. But uh, this is 0.165 hypodermic tubing. I know I've said that a million times, but I want you to be able to go look it up. You can buy this at McMaster Car. I buy it in big three foot sections because I use this for um, making uh, uh, tubing for fuel tanks on my nitros. So, uh, Anyway, oh, you're looking for the, uh, again, it's 0.165 inch outside diameter. The inside is 0.135 because the wall is 15 thousandths, okay? So that's the stuff you're shooting for. You can get the 10 thousandths wall too. This is actually 10. I use the 15 for tank uh, tubing because this 10, it's so thin that when you try to bend it, it tends to just fold over. And boy, it's hard to do even for the 15. But anyway, I digress. So to make these, you're taking a fairly long piece because we're gonna kind of squish it here or put it in the vise, whatever we gotta do. And you're gonna cut threads on here, all right? You're using 1032 because that's what we tapped this to. And just a regular die, okay? I'm not gonna show you that part, come on. Anyway, use a regular die and tap threads on here, just a short ways, enough so that it's gonna insert into the end of your rudder, right? And it's, it's really just kind of rolling threads on here because this stuff doesn't really cut, but it does it well enough that it'll thread in just fine and it'll kind of go in and you'll feel it kind of bind up and when you get to the end of the thread. So it really works nice. And then you're going to cut it where you want it to be. And now we're going to put this on. This is our, uh, takes the place of our uh, little ferrule there to hold the tubing on so it tends to not slide off. 3 16 brass. You're going to get this from the hobby store. All right, regular old 3 16 brass. And it almost goes on there. So you're going to get on there and you're going to push kind of hard and you're going to wiggle. And darned if it doesn't go on. Okay? And it goes on only a short ways. Well, you don't want to go very far. I don't know. Can you see that okay? You want just enough to hold that tubing on. And as you press it on, it kind of flares ever so slightly, which is good. That acts as our barb, right? Now we've got to make that stay. Here's how we're going to do that. Uh, let's go on this side. Put it in your vise. You got a vise, don't you? Get your soldering iron. You do have a soldering iron, don't you? <laughs> and get some of this. This is Stay Bright. This is a lead-free solder that'll stick nicely to stainless. Okay, it works on stainless and brass and all kinds of stuff. It's not really what you would use for electrical work. That would be more of a leaded solder, but they call that, I don't know, you probably can't read it. It's called Silver Bearing Solder, lead-free. Comes with an acid flux. Acid, okay? So don't be uh, toying with that. Trust me, it doesn't taste good. And you do got to dab a little acid in there. 
otherwise it's not going to work, okay? So if you just dab a tiny bit here on one side, it'll work its way around, especially once we put a little heat on it. And when you're soldering, if you're not really experienced in soldering, it, you if I put the soldering iron on the stainless and started doing this, I'm going to have solder stuck all over here. We don't really want that. We kind of want it down inside the brass. Even if it gets out on, on, on the exposed area where you can see it, that's fine. We can file it, sand it, whatever, make it go away. But the solder runs toward heat, okay? So our main goal is going to be to heat the brass and then dab the solder here at this gap and the solder should run down in. How are we doing here? Love this gun. Boy, this thing heats quick. Do you see that? You can tell it's been pretty hot. So we're going to put it on here and the gas is going to, the acid is going to fizzle and make all kinds of noxious gases that are probably going to send me to an early grave. And uh, as you can imagine, we're not really trying to seal this because the tubing is going to exceed over it. I don't know if you could tell, just a tiny bit ran into it and that is all I need. Okay, I'm done. Now to cool this off, you go ahead and stick it in your mouth really quick. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Here's what we do next. Okay, it is gonna cool pretty quickly because it's a lot of material, see? I got it nice and hot, solder boogied on down in there. This is overkill, but quick way to cut it. Take it down to the stainless. Right there. And touch it up just a little bit with a finer disc. And we're going to taper it a little bit. Remember, we're creating our barb, and there we go. And then you use the world's greatest trick, and that is you grab one of these 3M pads, and you kind of buff it all up a little. And bingo, we have a beautiful little barb. Can you see that all right? On our tubing. And now you're ready to go. I actually did a much better job on this one than I did on these. So it's good that I repeated myself. And there you go. Lastly, you're gonna thread them into your rudder, your modified rudder, after you clean out these threads with a little bit of alcohol, okay? Your brake cleaner, shoot a little brake cleaner. Same on here where you've got your threads here. And then just mix up a little bit of JB Weld and apply it on there and then thread these guys in. And you can run them in there nice and snug. They'll go down by hand. You'll feel it snug when you get all the way down in there. And that JB Weld will set up. And they're not going anywhere. And look at that beauty. There's our new piece here that gives us all the angle we were after. We're going to have a massive amount of water flow. And we are all set. All right, cut you a rudder. Give me a like. Don't be a Scrooge. See you on the flip side. Mm, 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 mm.